Hello and welcome. I'm John Garlic, and I'm here with the Sheriff of Calhoun County, Matthew Wade. Hello, Sheriff. How are you? It's always good to be on the show, John. It's great to have you here. Fall weather is upon us. Is it? I love it. It's, I it love is it. upon us. It's nice weather. I got my windows down, my car top down. It's awesome. It is. I love this time of year. Yep. And and so do so do your deputies. They've been out in the fresh air. They have arresting the folks. A absolutely. Let's take a look at the count. Four, five arrests this week. I'm about to miscount, stretch my educational boundaries. Brings <laughs> our count up to 4,867 people arrested, all because you were willing to help us. And we appreciate that more than you know. Uh, law enforcement, as it should be, is a two-sided event where it's law enforcement exists to help the citizens and the citizens uh, help us keep their, city, their cities and streets safe. So we appreciate that. We do definitely have to do it together. Law enforcement with the Sheriff's Office, a community partnership. Absolutely, we cannot do it without you. And speaking about community and partnerships, this is Halloween week. It, Halloween week, you know, and the, the, I love Halloween. I like, I, I hate scary movies. I'm more of a comedy guy, but I'll watch them, but I get a little anxiety from it, you know, but I, I'll watch them with the kids. And <laughs> But I do love uh, where I live. There's tons of kids that come by and trick or treat, and I love to sit out there and give them candy. I like to see their costumes and just the, the feel of, of excitement in the air for, you know, like I said, fall is just a wonderful time, but uh, some people do use this time of year to uh, try to do mischievous and criminal acts, and uh, the Sheriff's Office is, is always here to help you, and you can go to our website to look for any sex offenders if you want to plan your route, and always check your children's candy. So be safe, be respectful, be responsible for this Halloween, but stay tuned for the first half of the lineup here on Calhoun County's Most Wanted. Scammers are now taking advantage of people's increased economic anxiety. One of the latest ploys is to phone unsuspecting victims and pose as representatives of utility companies. A scammer may identify themselves as your local power company. They may be able to identify your account number and even your name and address, but that does not mean they are legitimate. They may claim you are past due and your services are about to be shut off. Do not let the implied seriousness of this call frighten you into making a quick decision to pay. Instead, hang up the phone, then contact your local utility company directly using the phone number listed on your bill or on their website. Speak with a representative to check on your account. Never give your banking information over the phone unless you have placed the call yourself to a phone number that you know is correct. Utility companies do not demand your banking information by email or phone. They will not force you to pay over the phone as your only option. Any reputable company will never request payment by gift card, reloadable cash card, wiring money, or cryptocurrency. Some of the requested cards could be MoneyPack, Vanilla, Google, eBay, Amazon, or even an iTunes card. But you should know that there are still many more variety of cards the scammer could suggest that you use. If they ask for payment in any form of these cards, it is a scam. For more information, you can go to ftc.gov or call me, Nancy Hilton, at the Calhoun County Sheriff's Office at 256-236-6600. And welcome to this week's edition of Calhoun County's Most Wanted. First up in our lineup this week, Huey Noel. Mr. Noel, last known to be living in Anniston, he's wanted for probation violation on possession of a controlled substance. Take a look at Maxima Bouchard. Mr. Bouchard, last known to be living in Alexandria, he's wanted for failure to appear on domestic violence, third harassment. This is Misty Haywood. Miss Haywood, last known to be living in Rainbow City, she's wanted for probation violation on fraudulent use of a credit card. Take a look at James Haygood. Mr. Haygood, last known to be living in Anniston, he's wanted on a probation violation for possession of a controlled substance. And we'd like you to meet Dana Poole. Miss Poole, last known to be living in Ohatchee, she's wanted on a bond revocation for possession of a controlled substance, possession with intent to distribute, possession of marijuana second, and illegal possession of prescription drugs. And this is Dustin Langley, Mr. Langley, last known to be living in Oxford, wanted for probation revocation on possession of a controlled substance. And we'd love for you to meet Melinda Hinton, Miss Hinton, last known to be living in Oxford. She's wanted for failure to appear on possession of a controlled substance and use and possession of drug paraphernalia. And that's it for the first half of our lineup. Stay tuned for the second half later in the show. 
And welcome back. Uh, we are here with Carolyn Potter, CEO, that's Chief Executive Officer of the Wellhouse. Yes. Carolyn, how are you? I'm great, and I'm thankful to be here today. Thank you for letting me come. So why don't Always you tell a pleasure. Why don't you tell the listeners uh, what the Wellhouse is all about? Okay, so the Wellhouse exists um, to provide um, restoration opportunities to female survivors of human sex trafficking. And we have multiple phases, beginning with um, a call to our crisis line, and then that, um, you know, we do an assessment over the phone, and then afterwards the person, if they're accepted, they come to our trauma center. And at the trauma center, we do all various types of, of psychological assessments to determine a treatment plan. And we also determine if there may be a substance use issue um, that needs to be addressed right away. And then from there, they enter the first phase of the programming, which is more stabilization, therapy, life skills. And from there, they go on to uh, a long-term phase of the program where they're really digging into their therapy. And um, they're celebrating their recovery. You know, by then they've been in recovery for several months as far as drugs are concerned. And um, they most are going, taking advantage of a scholarship program to go to college. And then once they graduate, which that's about a year long um, process there, they're able to apply to enter our transitional living apartments. They're also on our campus and they can live there for two more years. And after three years, um, we see great success. And that includes addressing everything from childhood trauma to trauma from trafficking and substance use. And then we um, offer the life skills and the educational opportunities and they become employed. Um, many are sent there through uh, a court order after an encounter with law enforcement because of their trafficking. and. It's just an opportunity to avoid a non-rehabilitative jail setting and get to the wall house and really dig in and get some true help and then become people that we're all proud of. And, and Sheriff, you know, we, we hear a lot about human trafficking and, uh, you know, I think I-20 is probably one of the big, biggest trafficking routes. So it is, in, not just for human trafficking, but all sorts of trafficking, but... Um, you know something that you, that you say is that you said was very, uh, uh, I believe in so very strongly, and that's the fact that you got somebody who has a substance abuse issue or things happen in their life that's turned them down this path. Mm -hmm. What's the goal? Mm -hmm. You know, in America, what's the goal? Everybody wants you to lock up somebody and throw away the key. Right. And there's some people we should do that with. There's yes. there's 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 mean evil people, yeah. and we should do that too. But somebody that you just described, yeah. isn't the goal to make them. Yes. Have a, yeah. a, a, the best life they can have and, yes. and be productive citizens and yeah. be able to live and uh, have a home and, and a job and have things that they like, a family, a career. Mm -hmm. So I'm very strong for that. And a jail yeah. is not where you can get right. that. Uh, yes. People, you want to put that in a jail setting, but a jail is not yeah. where you re rehabilitate yeah. somebody. It's going to make them worse probably. It's yeah. not going to make them yeah. better. Well, I couldn't agree with you more. Um, after having done this work for seven years, along with some um, experiences even in my personal life with some family members, um, I am convinced that many people who are in jail right now are, first of all, struggling with mental health issues, yes. that they have attempted to self-medicate with drugs, and then that leads them ultimately into an encounter with law enforcement. And of course, something has to be done. You know, you just can't let it happen and not address it, but. Absolutely, and, and where it gets clouded is people want to blame law enforcement. You shouldn't yeah. lock these people up. Well, yeah. no, they've broke the law and they're right. doing things that's not right or good for society. Yes. Where the breakdown is, there is absolutely no help for, with somebody yeah. in Alabama that has mental health issues. Even yeah. if they have insurance and family that loves them, it's very difficult yeah. to get them any help. You, you just really hit on a, a topic that um, we've encountered. Uh, we agree, if it, especially if it's a serious mental health issue like schizophrenia, um, bipolar, and so forth. It is really, really difficult. And so we developed that assessment process to um, determine what these issues are. And then we developed a um, partnership with Alabama Psychiatry, and they will assist with these issues with these young ladies. And um, we have had amazing success, just amazing success. So 
I, I know that the resources are limited and it's really, really hard. And, but what we have been able to do, in fact, we've just begun a um, deferment repro program with Jefferson County with the DA's office and the judge there where that, whereby they can defer someone straight to um, the well house. Awesome. And I would, I, we've talked with, with DA uh, office here in Calhoun County as well. And we um, would offer that to your law enforcement officers. Sure. If you encounter a trafficking victim, um, just call us and we'll, we'll do our best, you know, to take care of her. And we go as far as to ensure that they um, visit their probation and pro officers if they need to. And, and we do drug testing. We write reports and, you know, it's not just that there's no oversight. Sure, and that's what they need. And uh, I think we need to take a break. We do need to take a break but, and uh, then we'll come back and talk about deferment programs. So yeah. stay with us here on Cavan County's Most Wanted. And welcome to the second half of our lineup. First up this half, Daniel Wiseman. Mr. Wiseman, last known to be living in Anniston. He's wanted on bond revocations for possession of a controlled substance and use and possession of drug paraphernalia. And this is Kevin Christian. Mr. Christian, last known to be living in Anniston, he's wanted for a writ of arrest on possession of a forged instrument second. And take a look at Joel Spears. Mr. Spears, last known to be living in Newell, he's wanted for probation violation on possession of a controlled substance. And meet Petrina Griffin. Miss Griffin, last known to be living in Oxford, she's wanted on a probation violation for possession of a controlled substance. And this is Patrick McMurray. Mr. McMurray, last known to be living in Piedmont, he's wanted for failure to appear on possession of a controlled substance. And have a look at Orlando Carmichael. Mr. Carmichael, last known to be living in Mumford, he's wanted for failure to appear on use and possession of drug paraphernalia. And that's it for our lineup this week. If you have any information or know where these folks are, please give Crime Stoppers a call. They're number 1-833-251-7867. Welcome back. We hope you saw somebody in uh, both halves of the lineup to uh, maybe you know where they are, you know who they are. If you do, give the Sheriff's Office a call or call that Crime Stoppers number. We're here with Carolyn Potter, CEO of The Well House, talking about human trafficking and what they can do to to help turn people around and, and save save yeah. young women's lives. Um, and it's a terrible problem here, not just here in Calvin County, it's a problem here, it's a problem all over the United States. Yes. And we were talking about mental health and uh, drug use. You know, when, when society fails to correct a problem, i.e. The, the, you know, state and local governments don't step up and do something to solve a problem, mm -hmm. law enforcement is forced to react to those problems. You know, and, yes. and we see that a lot of times with not just this, but mental health, we see it with somebody who disagrees with a law, marijuana is, a, is uh, the illegalization of marijuana is one of those laws that people get upset about, but we don't make the law, we just have to react to what's given to us and deal with the disruptions in society and having somebody to help us yeah. is, is where we're at because we're limited, we can arrest them yeah. and put them in jail. Yeah. Yeah. And so at the Wall House we say we like to stay in our lane. And we respect the role of law enforcement, the, the role of the courts, and so forth. We just want you all to know that we're here to help. If you have someone and you've identified um, them as a trafficking survivor, trafficking victim, and you feel like they would be better served in a rehabilitative setting, we're here to help. And you know, to let you know, we've been just extremely successful with people who have been deferred through law enforcement and the court system. How many, how many people are, do, can you handle at one yeah, time? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, and it's something that here in Alabama we can be proud of. We know that across the country through surveys, the average number of beds in these organizations for trafficking survivors is six to eight. And so we currently have 26 um, what we call treatment beds. That's from the, the beginning to the graduation. And then we have another 14 transitional living, so that's 40 beds here. Wow. And then we, we as, as soon as we are, are awarded our license through DHR, we will be opening a home. It's already built, it's ready, it's there, it's staffed. We have the program, but this will be a home for children ages 18, uh, sorry, 11 through 18 who've been trafficked. And we'll take private placements, you know, just referrals from um, organizations and 
parents and anyone who, who believes their child's been trafficked. So, um, again, you know, in just a very rural area of St. Clair County, we have easily the largest um, program serving human trafficking survivors with the widest array of services. We have. That's amazing. So Alabama's yeah. leading the nation in, yes. in providing care yes. and treatment and rehabilitation for human yeah. trafficking victims. Absolutely. And you may have heard that the Attorney General's Office has established an alliance on human trafficking. And along with um, uh, many, many others, we're a member of that alliance and we are a service provider for the, for the victims. So where does your funding come from? Uh, that's a great question also. Um, we're a nonprofit, so funding is like with any nonprofit, individuals, um, foundations. We do have one grant, the Victim of Crime Assistance Grant. It's federal money, comes to the state, and then the state um, you know, gives it to us, awards it to us. We have a couple of fundraisers a year. We have a great junior board that raises money, and then we have, we just had our fall luncheon. So it's just, you know, diverse um, resources, you know, for funding. You know, when people talk about human trafficking, I think probably those that aren't initiated to, to, to be aware of it think this must be more international yeah. people. These are, these are people from, young girls from Latin America that are being brought to the United States to be yeah. trafficked. That's not necessarily true, is it? Yeah. Mm -mm. No, that is not. And, you know, trafficking is defined by three words, force, fraud and coercion and when you have those elements and you know someone is forcing something to do that for their selfish gain you have human trafficking whether it's labor trafficking or, or you know in, in TV a lot of times you know makes it seem like it's always going to be a stranger that yeah. does it and that's not no. the case in human trafficking and, and I really encourage people to do some uh, Google searches on human trafficking yeah. and read up about what it really is and you know, most people aren't kidnapped and handcuffed and kept somewhere. It's, it's different. A lot yes. of it's co coercion. It's, yeah. it's financial means they use them. They yeah. get them on drugs and use the drug, the supply and demand of drugs uh -huh. to co coerce them and, and to do things they need to do. So it's just not as, uh, it's not the guy lurking in the shadows. It could yeah. be somebody that started out dating this person. Yes. And next thing you know, they're, they're trafficking. Well, Sheriff, I can see that you've educated yourself well on this topic because that is absolutely correct. We've seen everything from a college boyfriend forcing his girlfriend to sell herself for drugs to families who've sold their children, which is unimaginable, of mm -hmm. course, to, you know, to the um, higher level trafficking situations where they're making a hundred to $200,000 a year per girl and they might have 10 to 12 girls. Well, it's a, it's a tragic situation. We're glad the well house, well house exists and that Alabama is leading the nation because of you. Yes. So thank you sure. for your wonderful organization, for your effort in keeping that going, and for being a guest on our show. Well, thank you for giving me this opportunity. I uh, appreciate it and appreciate what you do. Yes, and you, you too, John. Thank you. And we'll be right back for the crazy criminal and the Crime Stoppers portion of our show here on Calhoun County's Most Wanted. And welcome to the Crime Stoppers part of our show where we ask you to help our investigators with the following cases. First up, on October 19th between 6.30 p.m. and 9.15 p.m., this car was broken into after it broke down on I-20 westbound at mile marker 184. A hydraulic jack, battery spare tire, and credit cards were stolen from that vehicle. And on Sunday, October 24th, between the hours of 3.45 p.m. and 4.30 p.m., home was burglarized on Chelsea Springs Road. And on October 24th at 8.30 p.m., a home on Bradford Street in Anniston had gunshots fired into it. A white Toyota Altima with two black male occupants was seen stopped in the roadway. And that's it for the Crime Stoppers cases. If you have any information on these cases, please give Crime Stoppers a call at 1-833-251-7867. Y'all so stupid! It's crazy criminal time, Sheriff. Let's just jump right jump into right it. Quick on time crunch. So uh, Thursday night, I was at uh, about 2.30 in the morning. I was asleep. The Sheriff's Office called me, which they do more than you realize. And I answered the phone, and they said, uh, DA7 is chasing somebody on 431. And my mind immediately goes, DA7? Who's DA? Oh, that's a DA's investigator. Why is a DA's investigator chasing somebody at 2.30 in the morning? Why are they calling to tell me a DA's investigator? They said, is chasing somebody at 2.30 in the morning. And the dispatcher said, well, his wife said the person he's chasing was in your yard. Oh, whoa. So uh, 
you see these three guys up there, so I, I say, do what? So I go straight into mode, you know, I go into ninja mode and go outside with a gun and I'm looking, there's nobody around. So I call DA7, which is uh, Kevin Thrasher, who works for our wonderful DA's office, and I asked him what's going on, and he said that he was asleep and his wife woke him up because their uh, security cameras alarmed, and they look on the security cameras and this guy's pulling on their doors. So he gets on his, in his truck, he's, he's uh, you know, barefooted, he's got his gun, he's in the truck, and well, when he comes to the end, because we live in the same neighborhood, mm -hmm. so he comes up to a stop sign, there's a car there. So he's running the tag to the car, unbeknownst to him, my security camera's on my house, you can see these guys hiding around my cars. <laughs> So uh, all of a sudden, two of them run and get in the car and, and take off. He chases them. The third one, they just left behind. Oh. So he ran down the street. And when I'm talking to Kevin, the sheriff's office called and said, some guy's trying to report that car stolen. And he was one block away from my house. So me and Kevin go over and arrest him. And on the pictures, though, those were the three guys that we ended up catching. Um, you know, people say marijuana never does anything wrong. Well, they had marijuana. They had heroin. They had uh, firearms. Uh, and actually scary, they stole keys out of some of these people's cars, I guess in apparent time to come back and steal them later. But now you come to our neighborhood, the sheriff's house, we're going to put you in jail. So uh, just stay out of Calhoun County because they were from Birmingham and we wish they would stay there. Stay in Birmingham. Well, that's great job, Sheriff. Thank you for, for protecting the folks in Calhoun County and protecting your own house and the DAs. And thank you all for tuning in this week and hope to see you again next week, but not in the lineup here on Calhoun County's Most Wanted.